Hi everyone, welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. Sorry, I've been on a little bit of a hiatus. I've been uh, bit very busy getting back to work at school and all the craziness that that entails at this time in life. Anyway, I wanted to come back and show you two projects. They're very similar uh, that I'm going to be doing out of this calendar, Shine Bright in All You Do. And the two pages I have chosen for this are the Christmas one that says it's the most wonderful time of the year and the thankful and blessed. Okay, I'm going to be using two of these plastic trays from the Dollar Tree. Uh, they are part of the fall collection. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There is the item number. Okay, my store has them. They're square. They're, uh, the inside is nine and a half by nine and a half. So um, they don't have this tape on them either. This is I wanted to get this masking done before I got on camera. Anyway, so you're going to cut your two pictures down to nine and a half by nine and a half. And I thought this one would look really good in the orange. And I thought this one would look really good in this like burnt red. It's just, it's not a bright red. It's a very nice fall red. But because of the colors of the poinsettias in here, I thought it pulled this color very nicely. So that's what we're going to do. Now, a lot of people have been saying they've been having problems with the um, letters and whatnot on the back of the calendar, the actual calendar page, bleeding through when they decoupage. So how I'm going to remedy that is by painting the base of my trays black. And for that, I'm just going to use Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink. And I'm not going to worry about this being a perfect coat. I'm just darkening it up. That's why I masked this. I'm hoping that it will look nice without a border on the edge. And so I'm hoping that um, I don't want any of this black to show. So I'm hoping this can just be very clean and look like a frame when it's all said and done. So just going to do a quick coat on this orange one because it's going to have the white Be Thankful page. I was very careful with my masking and got it as close to the edge as I felt safe for it to not show because I wanted, like I say, it to be a clean edge. So I'm going to just go ahead and slather on some chalk paint. I am going to make sure that my brush strokes all go in the same direction just because that will make it look nicer in the end. But this step should help disguise the, um, the, the writing on the calendar page from behind. I'm not too worried about it on the Christmas one because it is black, but there are white flowers in the picture, so I that's why I'm going to go ahead and do that one too. And I'm just taking little short strokes where the orange is showing through and hoping that I can get away with just one quick coat. That's my goal. Okay, so there's that one all painted. It's not perfect, and that's okay. I think as crafters, sometimes we get hung up on things being perfect and they don't need to be perfect. Um, imperfections show you that it was not made by a machine. And I think imperfections, especially if you're going for the farmhouse look, imperfections are what it's all about. Embrace those imperfections and make them part of your piece. We are going to be using Mod Podge on this, and for these calendars, I really like the matte finish Mod Podge. So that's what I'll be using to attach. You could also use spray adhesive if you wanted to. I plan on putting Mod Podge down, and then um, letting it dry and putting a second coat over the top, and then spraying it with a clear coat to protect it. All right, just making sure I get all the runs and dribbles out. Okay, these just need to dry, and then we'll come back and do the Mod Podge. All right, so we are back on this, and they are dry. So I'm going to go ahead and peel my masking tape off. P 
peeling up a little bit. I'm okay with that. It's not going to show. Another option if you didn't want to paint right on your trays and you didn't want to mess with masking is you could flip your papers or your calendar pieces over and paint them with chalk paint. You will see me do that to something in the next video. And uh, yeah, but my suggestion to you would be to paint the back of your calendar page before you cut it down to size. That's just something I discovered. I had never painted the back of my calendar pages before. So I was exploring with something that somebody had, or experimenting with something somebody had mentioned in another video. So we'll see. Yeah, this is not. <laughs> the masking tape is peeling up the chalk paint. So I think it'll be okay. It's not going to be seen. It's just there to protect the back. All right, let's get some more podge on these guys. So we're going to do the red one first because it's right here closest. All right. It's just a Mod Podgey kind of day. I am going to attempt to not get Mod Podge on the up on the edges just down here in the flat part so that is my goal <laughs> whether or not that happens time will tell so I'm going around my edge first I'm kind of wondering when with the video that I'm working on simultaneously with this one for those painted calendar pages. I'm wondering if that's going to help prevent the calendar from wrinkling. So tune into the video after this one to see how that turns out. Normally I paint the back of my paper piece with Mod Podge before I paint glue it down, but I'm not going to do that with this one. Set it in. Center it. And roll it out. I always roll from the center out to the edges. That way it gets the bubbles out. You can also use a credit card to smooth it. And if you get some glue on the top, that's okay because we're going to put another coat on top of the picture. It's just, it's really hard to get the roller all the way to the edge. So I'm using my fingers for that. A debit card would work great. I heard like an old an empty gift card. I just don't have any handy. Okay. Just keep rolling it. And I'm not going to put the top coat on just yet. Okay. I'm going to let that sit to the side for a few minutes while I Move on the other one. That'll give it time to bubble if it's going to. And then uh, I'll be able to smooth those out. Hopefully this will keep the calendar writing from, oops, from showing through. Thank the artists that have done these beautiful calendars for the Dollar Tree this year. They are amazing to work with. I'm just going to keep rolling this one because it is wrinkling more than the other one did. 
even with the little wrinkles that are in there, you can kind of see them. I don't think they're terrible. And you just keep rolling them as it dries. This one's wrinkled a little bit, but not too much. So set those aside, let them dry for 10 minutes or so, and then roll them again. And then uh, just keep working it until all of the Mod Podge you see is completely dry. And then you can go in with your top coat. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and set these aside. I'll work them every now and then just to make sure the bubbles get out. And uh, we'll be back when these are dry. All right, we are back. These are dry. And we are going to put our final Mod Podge coat on. And I am trying to not go up the edge of the plate. <laughs> I could mask it, but I'm not going to. This is my final coat, so I am going to make sure that I have all of my brush strokes going in the same direction so that I get a nicer finish. If you want a more decorative finish, you could do like little circles or whatever, but I like it just going up and down. If I do this, on puzzles. I don't know if you know this or not, but you can use Mod Podge to glue a puzzle together. I usually just pour it on in the middle and smear it around with my hands and squish it into all the little nooks and crannies of the puzzle pieces. And then um, when I do my final coat, I go like spin the brush like that. So I get all these little circles on my brushes. All right, this one is done. It just needs to dry and have a hanger put on it and I'm very happy with how these are looking as far as not being able to see the calendar pages or the calendar writing from the other side so painting the surface black worked um, on my next video you're going to see another technique where I actually painted the back side of the calendar piece black that also works but if you're going to do that make sure you do that before you cut your calendar piece to size that way if there's any curling you won't get black smudges on your calendar piece because the edges are going to roll up just a little bit when they get wet but as it dried, it flattened right back out, and I was very happy with it. Okay, so just a couple of different ways that you can deal with these light-colored calendar pages and the bleeding through of the writing on the other side. All right, getting my brush strokes all going the same way. And we are done with this one until it's ready for a hanger, except for I need to wipe off some of this extra Mod Podge that went up the side of my plate. Um, baby wipes are fabulous for this. Just kind of roll it into a corner and make a clean edge. And it works great. All right. Okay, these just need to dry completely and then we'll come back and put a hanger of some sort on them. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet, but we'll be back. All right, I am back and we are ready to put some hangers on these things. I got this uh, black and white buffalo check ribbon at the Dollar Tree. You might have seen it on my last um, video haul. And we're just going to glue this on to the back. This is a 24 inch piece and I have my glue gun heating up and I'm just going to glue this on. I think since I'm gluing to plastic that this will be fine. You could put E6000 on if you wanted. 
to add extra security, but this is so lightweight and I think it's going to be just fine with just the plastic, I mean just the hot glue. I did take these outside and give them a quick spritz with um, a clear coat just to keep the Mod Podge from getting sticky. Okay. I'm just pressing down to make sure that the glue kind of soaks into the ribbon. Now, this is where I like to uh, have a little fun. <laughs> Um, it needs a bow on the hanger. I don't like to put bows, I don't want to put a bow on the actual piece. So, it's probably bigger than I need, but let's see how big are these. They're about 24 inches as well. I'm going to pull up my uh, hanger and decide right where the middle is and then I'm going to put this ribbon at the center and tie a knot and then I'm going to tie a bow and pull the pieces apart and then I have a cute little hanger. Make sure that you cut your ribbons at an angle or with a fishtail to keep them from raveling. Okay. And then that one is done. Okay, so this is what my bow ends up looking like. And once I hang them up at the end, you'll be able to see that. And now with the black one, I don't really want to do red because I'm afraid that the reds will clash too much. Although I kind of do like the red. I'm going to go with the red. It's probably going to clash a bit and that's just the way it's going to have to be. put a green in there I suppose okay so I'm going to pull up decide where the middle of my hanger is and this time I'm going to be using three ribbons tie a knot and then tie a bow. Three ribbons I think is a little too, a little more than it needs, but it's fun. Pull the three colors apart so you can see them all. And then that gives you an even fuller bow up top. Okay, so we'll get a good picture of that when it's all said and done and pretty. All right, there you have it, my two finished trays. Um, I really like how they turned out and I like the simplicity of them. And I like that the bow is on the hanger and not actually on the piece itself. Okay, Le these are 100% Dollar Tree DIYs. Uh, you can get the Mod Podge, the ribbon, the calendar, and the tray all at the Dollar Tree. Uh, the black paint you can get at the Dollar Tree. I didn't use Dollar Tree paint, but you can get it there. Let me know what you're thinking of this project in the comment section below. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if this is something you might try to make for yourself. And if you like the color combinations, uh, just let me know what you're thinking. And if you have a particular calendar paint you'd like to see me uh, do a craft with, let me know that too. 
All right, this has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.